What's going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den located in Colmar, PA. And in this video, we're gonna be covering my push day. So it's my first push day of the week. I really love this day, it kind of sets the tone for the week. I get a phenomenal pump. Uh, and just like we've done with other training videos, I'm gonna be kind of dissecting what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, uh, and this will be a great workout for you guys to try. Before we get to the video, if you haven't liked the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and uh, share it with your friends, okay? Let's get right to it. So when it comes to push, uh, the first thing I've been doing in this mezzo is bench pressing. Now in the past, a lot of people have told me like just can the bench press, et cetera. Uh, but the reason I like using the bench press is to just warm up my upper body and all the muscles that are gonna be used for the remainder of the session and also to pre-fatigue myself a bit. And this is specifically for me. So my dumbbells only go up to 100 here and other gyms I've trained at their dumbbells go up to 150 plus. So knowing that I only have up to 100 pounds it's nice to be able to use other variations to pre-fatigue myself. So when I do have to use the dumbbells, uh, I'm, I'm fatigued enough that I can develop a really good mind-muscle connection and I also have the proper weight availability uh, to use for that variation. With the bench press, uh, typically I have more of a narrow grip bench press. So what you see in this video, a lot of people always say, why is your grip so narrow? Uh, this is my regular bench press, okay? Because it's wider uh, than my close grip. Uh, and to be honest with you, where I'm at right now, I don't, uh, you know, plan on competing in a powerlifting competition, so I don't want to have a super wide bench. And typically what I find is the wider you go, it becomes really technical based. Um, and for right now, I'm trying to stimulate my chest, you know, my shoulders, my triceps. Uh, so this grip width is fine with me. So we're doing three sets of eight to 10 here. And uh, just slowly working up, you know, I used to have a really strong bench press per se. I was in the 315 plus for this rep range. Uh, and since I've taken some time off, since my body, you know, this is a new or novel stimulus, right now uh, I'm sitting about 275 in this video. So I do 275 for all my working sets and I end up ending my set uh, with eight reps, kind of just where I want to be. The week prior I did 265 and I realized it was a little bit too light, uh, but good news is, is since progressive overload, I, the next week I can just take note of that and I can increase the weight by a little bit to get the right stress to the muscles. So when it comes to the bench press specifically for me, what I'm focusing on is controlling that eccentric. All right, a lot of people like to go fast in the eccentric, they kind of crash the bar in their chest. And really what that does is uh, just limits the amount of gains possible. Uh, and it also screws up our bar path. So by controlling that eccentric, you're really able to feel the proper muscles, you're able to keep the control of the bar and have proper bar path on the way up. So for me, my rule of thumb is my concentric should always be the same or faster uh, than the eccentric uh, portion of the lift, okay? Uh, a couple staples, I made other videos on this which you guys can check out, I'll link them up here, or a playlist per se, is uh, keeping my feet plain on the ground, making sure that I'm not lifting my head and I'm driving my shoulders into that bench uh, just so that it's technically proficient uh, for the bench press specifically. Now the next move we have is going to be a dumbbell pause flat bench. So just like I said in the beginning of the video, I like utilizing the flat bench uh, just to pre-fatigue my chest so that I can get a good mind-muscle connection when it comes to using the dumbbells. I also, on top of that, I'm adding a pause. So that pause is basically gonna make the variation harder, it's gonna limit how much weight I can use, and it's gonna get a really good stretch. Uh, so if you can see in this video, I'm really letting my elbows go down as far as they can. Uh, I actually, as I travel down, I go a little bit wider to just strength or, or to just lengthen um, my muscle more, and then I'm coming all the way up uh, and just having full range of motion. So nothing really specific or pretty to it, other than I just found that you know using this variation second to my bench press just gives me a great uh, stimulus to the chest. And with that pause, it makes it a harder variation and I can use uh, the dumbbells that I have and, and get a solid lift in. So three sets of there, 12 to 15 reps. Uh, usually I start off hitting 15 and by the time I'm, I'm done, uh, I'm gonna be hitting 12 reps. Now, as you can see, we start off with a compound lift. We have the bench press, we go to a little bit more isolation with the flat dumbbell pause bench. Uh, and then we're gonna go purely isolation and do cable flies. Cable flies have been something I always loved. Uh, and there's just a, a hot take on that is that if you enjoy it and you like doing something, keep it in your program because it's going to make you more motivated to train. And I always just have loved doing fly since I was a kid. I've talked about it for years since I've been on this channel. Uh, sometimes I change the angle at which I'm doing flies. Uh, but since I am kind of getting back into a prep, I am getting a, a, just a great stimulus and I'm able to push weight on these a lot more than when I started. Uh, so for these, we're doing 12 to 15 reps for the flies. 
Uh, once again, just focusing on full range of motion. I like to try to kind of arc my back a bit so that I can get a really deep stretch into the chest. Uh, I'd also keep my head up because it just helps me with my breathing. Typically when my head's down, I feel like clogged up in my throat because uh, I have a little bigger of a neck and it almost makes me feel like I'm choking, which may not be for everybody, but uh, for somebody who does have a bigger neck, uh, just kind of keeping that, that back arched, uh, keeping your head up is just gonna allow for a better airway for you to breathe between reps if you have to. It's just a little bit more comfortable and it also allows you to just really get that big stretch in the chest. So. Uh, been crushing these, absolutely love them, and they'll always be a staple in my program. So now moving on to triceps, we're gonna use these triangle grips that I, I absolutely love. I was first exposed to them uh, when I trained with Antoine and Juji uh, down in Tennessee. For whatever the reason is, they just feel a lot better and more isolating of the triceps than the rope attachment, not to say that the rope won't suffice, uh, but I just really enjoy these attachments, so I've been using them a lot. Um, same thing here, three sets, 12 to 15 reps. What I'm focusing on is not putting too much body English into it or using my upper body to, to gain momentum to push them down. Uh, I really like pressing down and almost out on the attachments. And when they come back up, I try to bring them as high up as possible or bend my elbow as much as possible just to really get full range of motion each time. Instead of just coming to 90 and stopping, I almost bring my, my fists up towards my chest uh, and then I drive back down. So. Just uh, something for you guys to consider, just play with, see if it works for you. Um, but you know these, these grips have been working phenomenally and my triceps are getting just a, a, just a juicy pump. Next exercise is gonna be dumbbell rockers. Uh, these were popularized by Westside. I've done them with Dave Tate. I just love them, especially as I just pre-fatigued them uh, with the pushdowns. I throw these in. Um, basically what we're looking for is just uh, keeping the range of motion the same throughout the exercise. You get tactile feedback by being able to rest the dumbbells on your chest, and then you're basically just rocking them up for an extension uh, for the triceps. So we'll do three sets, 12 to 15 here. Um, I think I'm using 50s in this video. So if I were to say start out with this, maybe I'm gonna be doing 70 to 90 pounds. Uh, and over time, I hope to get back to that. But since I'm pretty fatigued from the chest and benching and then the triceps, I uh, can't go as heavy, uh, but I really feel like they're just nailing those triceps over and over and over again with every rep. So something for you guys to check out and, and try, but I absolutely love these exercises uh, that I've been using for this mesocycle. I'm getting really good uh, results. Now, lastly, uh, for me, when it comes to shoulder training, I've been doing shoulders three days per week. So I have shoulders, I have my push day and my pull day, and then I sprinkle them in at the end of the week. Uh, this gives me a frequency of three times. Now, what I look at is just total volume. So I'm looking to get between 10 and 20 sets throughout the week. Uh, so I'll do four sets of these uh, this early on. But since I'm only doing four sets uh, on this day, it leaves me room to recover and then hit them again multiple times throughout the week. So I've just been doing shoulder uh, raises, so lateral raises with dumbbells. Uh, really just trying to isolate uh, the, the lateral head here. I've played with different grips, different styles, different techniques. So there you guys have it. That's gonna be my push day at the beginning of the week. I would really recommend you guys trying this workout, seeing if you like it, see what results you have, and comment down below if you did try it and what your results were. Um, we do offer programming on the app, so there's a link down below you guys can click for the Zastrang programming app, 21 plus programs, uh, cheap costs for the amount of programs you're getting, and also the knowledge behind the programs. So if you're somebody who's like, I just want a program to do and follow, uh, and it's done correctly, I highly recommend you guys get on that app. We have 350 plus people on the app right now. They love it. We have our Discord channel. You guys are more than welcome to hop in on that. We have a great community in there. Uh, and I just appreciate your guys' support. Uh, we have a ton of clinics and seminars coming up in the future that are on zatstrength.net. So just type zatstrength.net in the search bar, uh, go to shop, check out bestsellers tab, and you'll see all the upcoming events and clinics we have, which can be implement or lift specific, uh, all the way to coaching seminars for sports performance or how to program, etc. So check those out. I'd love to meet you guys in person, answer any personal questions that pertain to your training. And I really feel like when you guys invest in yourself, it totally takes your training to another level. So stay hungry guys uh, and get to those seminars and clinics as much as you can. Lastly, just want to say thank you guys so much for your support. I'm trying to keep this content consistent for you all. Uh, and you know, as it's been kind of crazy with my life and everything else, um, helping you guys out means the world to me. So thank you guys so much for watching it. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and always stay a Lean Mean Track Machine. Peace.